Oh, you're awake. Well, that's unfortunate for me. You were having the most delicious little nightmare, and I was almost done with it. No matter. I can wait until you fall back asleep. <laughs> no, no, little one. I am far older and more malevolent. I am an incubus, and I am here to feast on all of your fears. Feed on last. No, that's a common misconception, a rather muddled translation that occurred through the years of biblical writers playing telephone with each other. It works out for me, though, as you humans remain ignorant of us. No, unlike my brothers and sisters, the succubi, we incubi dine solely on mortal terror. We pump nightmares into you and consume the resulting emotions. You're like little farms for us, all plump with those little worries and concerns. Even now, you're questioning if this is real. Maybe I'm a figment. That'd be nice. At least you'd have an easy, discernible answer. But is that really comforting? to think that you're hallucinating a being that, should you talk to someone about, will write you off as having psychosis. Ah, that twinge of fear just now. I've struck a nerve. Let's pull on it a bit, shall we? What if this is all mental illness? You'll have to go on medications, won't you? And if those meds don't work? Or worse, what if they change who you are entirely? What if you can't remember which way is up and which way is down by the time they finish drugging you up and putting you into therapy? It would answer for a lot, but the thought of treatment options scares you more than my very presence. <sighs> Your fear is intoxicating. <laughs> but then, if I am real, doesn't that mean something worse? That you're not treatable. You're not having a dis-ease you can talk your way out of. It means you can't get rid of me and that voice inside your head will get louder and louder until you can't distinguish your own thoughts from my own voice. I am a demon, a fallen angel, one who followed Lucifer when God had his obedient slaves kick us out, when his champion, Michael, threw us out with his army. But the wonderful thing about humans, you forget so quickly. You get so busy with your daily lives now, working longer hours than in previous human history, getting fewer breaks, and anxiety rising on the daily. It's a genuine buffet for my kind. And I am so grateful that I can feast on your fears this evening. <laughs> Why you? Well, you were just the next on the list. You're nothing special, nothing unique. You're just another human, suffering the way every human suffers. And with no one to pray to, no way to fight back against the dark, you will be crushed by it. Slowly. Day by day, until you are broken 
and no more. The pain you will experience. <laughs> I won't gloat. I'm not into causing pain on a physical level. But I do like my fear when it has been seasoned with a bit of reality. See, I know your kind. You've been steeped in horror media for so long, you think you're immune to it. Look around this room, for example. You've got all kinds of memorabilia. From Carpenter to King, Poe and even Lovecraft. Hell, you even have Romero and Wes Craven. Horror movie icons, all of them. Back in the day, they would supply some excellent nightmare fuel. But nowadays, it's all sort of run-of-the-mill, pedestrian, mundane. So we have to get creative. You know, I said mundane like it's a bad thing. But the reality is, it's been quite beneficial. Missing work a few too many times. Fired. Can't pay your bills on time. Evicted. Can't afford medical care. Terminal illness. All the real life fears that aren't so glorious. I mean, come on, even Cthulhu has a face you can be afraid of. But that time in third grade when you shat your pants and know that everyone knew about it. You can't put a face to that. But you can put an emotion to it. And that humiliation and fear of rejection is far stronger than any creature I could come up with. Hell, I could just mention in passing a memory when you felt lost or left behind, and your stupid little brain would fill in the blanks for me. Ha! <laughs> there! I just did it. <laughs> no, I don't think I will go away. In fact, by the time I'm through with you, you'll be all alone with me, and I'll be dragging your tiny, insignificant soul to hell with me. I mean, what friend is going to want to stay with someone who doesn't even know when they're awake? What family member is wanting to be burdened or inconvenienced by your problems? I'll be your only friend, and it will drive you mad. Which is a nice little bonus, because you'll be dreaming even when you're awake. Daydreaming of the worst possible scenarios you could go through, and refusing to make decisions on your own. <laughs> <laughs> if it's real or not. You silly humans. You make stories up of demons and succubi coming into your bedroom to have their way with you and create happy endings to stories that were meant to be cautionary tales. But if you had our true names, you could cast us out. Not of your own power. You beings don't have that on own, but you keep giving us different names and manage to make it harder to fight us. Ironic. <laughs> Funny thing, you know. I used to have a lovely, angelic sounding name, but your doctors and psychiatrists call me anxiety now, or major depressive disorder. 
Sometimes even schizophrenia. <laughs> I think that one's my favorite. <laughs> Your priests and religious people barely believe that we exist anymore. Save for a few fanatics in the Vatican, I suppose. But you, little one, you can call me Ink. And I'll be visiting you every night until your soul is dragged down, kicking and screaming into hell, where the other demons will have their way with you. I know. Sounds sort of kinky, doesn't it? But hell isn't brimstone and fire, torture porn and cenobites. It's isolation. Separation from all that is holy or good. No love. Or hope. Just you, in dark, cold places. Far away from any light. With laughter coming from all angles. None of them laughing with you only at you and your pain <laughs> and I'm going to make you experience it firsthand here on earth a taste of what's to come <sighs> There are few ways out of it, but we both know you're too scared to get help now. <laughs> now sleep. Sleep and dream a little nightmare for me, little one. Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mazarus at the Stroke of Midnight. Some of you may know me as Samuel, the right hand of doom. Um, I just wanted to come out and say I know this one was a rough one. Uh, specifically, I wrote it um, to be kind of the opposite of all the succubi, incubi stuff that I've seen. I wanted to do something different. But I also wanted to talk a little bit. I'm not sponsored by anyone, but I want to talk about uh, mental health a little bit. This piece really speaks to what anxiety feels like. This piece also kind of represents what anxiety feels and looks like. Um, I know I've suffered from anxiety. I know a lot of the clients that I see suffer from anxiety. And it's a very palpable feeling of fear. And I wanted to tap into it with this series where... It's not monsters and mayhem that make us scared. It's the mundane everyday things, those fears that maybe we don't talk about. Uh, and I think that's why this one was kind of important for me to do. Um, with that being said, if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, please reach out to someone. Talk to someone. I know I made a jab at mental health in this quite a few times, but that is because many people who do suffer from mental illness really truly have these fears. The fears of losing themselves, the fears of um, you know, not just losing autonomy, but not being able to control their treatment or fear that it won't get better, that it will get worse. 
But I'm here to tell you it's okay. Those fears are normal. You should talk to someone about this. You should talk to someone about these fears. Find yourself a counselor. Find yourself a therapist. Find yourself a psychiatrist. Get your medications. Do what you need to. This is your reminder that it's okay. You are not alone. This stuff is scary, but you are not the only one who experiences it. So the way I'm going to be setting up this series, it's going to be basically a demonic possession. So it's going to be, it's going to be infestation, oppression, uh, possession, and then finally exorcism. Uh, being an old Roman Catholic myself, uh, it just kind of feels fitting to use those themes, uh, especially when it comes to what mental health feels like for most people. I hope this stirred something in you. For those of you who suffer, I hope it brought you some sort of comfort. And for those of you who don't understand what it's like to suffer with those things, I hope it does make you uncomfortable. Because this is what people with anxiety and depression, schizophrenia, this is what they deal with. And this gives you a glimpse into that. And hopefully it will help you better empathize with it. Because that's the goal. Not to demonize mental illness, not to demonize those with mental illness either, but to show you that the struggle is very real. Anyway, this part's gone on a little longer than I anticipated. Um, I'm very sorry about that, but as a counselor, I get very passionate and really like exploring these things with y'all. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Talk to someone who cares about you. There are more people than you think. Sweet dreams and pleasant nightmares. I experience it on the regular, and I know many of my clients, as a counselor, experience it as well. Jesus Christ, could you have a tinier penis, pal?